Hi guys, Economics here once again with the GCSE stimulus material for OCR June 2018. So, just continuing on this particular playlist, having a look now at the questions which I set and predicted with regard to the current account. So, we've been looking at the previous page where we had figures 1 and 2 where we were looking at exchange rate and the current account deficit for the UK and then we move into this figure 3 where we've got some information about a current account surplus and so I want to maybe just refer you to some questions which I think are maybe likely to appear and talk you through how you might go about answering some of those questions and also point you to some uh, past papers and exemplar material as well. So let's have a look then at maybe who knows, I'm just sort of predicting here, best guess scenario. But some questions for figure three. Compare Brazil's current account deficit with that of the UK. Now in your pre-release material, you can see at the top here, scroll this up a very touch, you can see the UK had the second largest current account deficit in the world in 2015, 123 and a half billion. And then we've got Brazil on the third here, 58.91 billion. So you might get a very straightforward question just asking you to compare. So in that instance, you would just have to say, obviously, for probably one mark, you would say that the UK's is higher than Brazil's. And then you would maybe work out, well, by what percentage is it higher? Or um, just take one from the other and find out what the difference is between the two values and set, state the actual value in billions of pounds. Not forgetting, of course, to state that it is in billions of pounds. So very straightforward uh, initial question. Second question. For six marks, this is a potential question. And if, certainly if you look back uh, historically at these papers, this type of question does appear quite often, a kind of state and explain question. Explain two reasons why China has a significant current account surplus. So... That is obviously related to China's rank here, ranking of one in terms of the value of its current account surplus. So you might be asked to give uh, and present a couple of reasons and arguments as to why that is the case. Um, so you would obviously want to start off by talking about the fact that a current account surplus means that X is greater than M or exports are greater than imports. So what does that mean in real terms? So it means that the value of money coming in from export sales is bigger than the value of money leaving the country from import costs or purchases. So that's what it is. So how would you explain why that might be the case? Well, there are a few things that you could mention for China. So let's say number one, the value of its currency is very undervalued. It's a very weak currency. And as a consequence of that, you know, I'm sure, that if you've got a weak currency, or it's a depreciating currency, then the price of exports will be falling, and cateris paribus, or all other things remaining equal, provided that the goods are of good quality, even though they're very cheap and inexpensive, then the demand should go up. So that would help to explain why you would sell lots of exports. And the flip side of the same coin is, of course, very weak currency means imports are very expensive. And so as a consequence, cateris paribus, you may not wish to buy uh, and you, the demand for imports will be low. And those two things combined, high exports, low imports, obviously gives you the current account surplus. So that's one reason. What about another one? So another one might be due to the cost of labour in China. Now, this really is changing a lot, and the cost of labour is going up and up, actually, in China. But I think it's still valid to give this as, a, as an explanation. So you could talk about the relatively low labour costs. And if your costs of production are low, then that means that you can keep your prices low. And if your prices are low, you know inverse relationship between demand and price. As price falls, demand goes up. And so you sell a lot of the things that you're making because your costs of production are low. So that, that whole sort of cheap production costs, cheap labour, all of that jazz uh, you could talk about. Thirdly, you could talk about maybe the productivity in China. 
So it's very labor abundant and consequently very labor intensive. And people they have a great work ethic, haven't they, in China? It's people of school age, they go to school for sort of 12 hours a day, come home, uh, have something to eat, and then straight into a three hour tutorial in an evening. So they're, they're from a very early age, they have a great work ethic. And so they work very hard at work, very efficient. So efficiency helps keep your costs down, that enables you to keep your prices down, and hence demand goes up. So again, that's something else that you could talk about. And then finally, what do you encounter in China? What's the big problem, of course? Well, smog and pollution. And why is that? It's because the regulation's pretty lax. Now, from a firm's point of view, lax regulations means that your costs are low because you don't have to start investing in all of these sort of environmentally production techniques. And so, sorry, environmentally friendly production techniques. So that keeps your costs down, keeps your prices low, and hence you can sell lots of exports. Lots, lots, of, and you know, that's not a finite list, but there are lots of things you can talk about there. So that's that one, ladies and gents. Let's have a look at the next one. Two reasons why Germany has a significant current account surplus. So again, Germany's second on the rankings here. <laughs> Who knows that you may get to question like this, you may not. And again, things that you could talk about on this one. So you might talk about the fact that uh, Germany, what, you know, if you think Germany, what do you think of? You think Audi, Volkswagen, Ducati, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, Mercedes-Benz AMG. You think of all of these top marks, top quality brands, which are made in Germany and then exported. And as a consequence of that, when you're exporting lots of these manufactured goods, then uh, obviously the value of exports goes up and so that helps to create this current account surplus that they have going on and of course they do refer to Germany as the engine don't they the engine room of Europe if, if the engine rooms ticking along nicely then everyone else does well and so they then buy the exports so it's a sort of you scratch my back I'll scratch your back uh, type of relationship going on there so that's something that you could mention you could also mention, maybe, um, the fact that Germany, of course, is part of the uh, euro, uh, the single currency area, the optimal currency area. And as a consequence of that, they no longer have this exchange rate fluctuation, so the German mark doesn't fluctuate against the Spanish peteta. And so that, uh, that constant exchange rate, that fixed exchange rate is the word I'm looking for, means that trade is more likely to take place and so you get more stable trade flows as a consequence. Okay, you could talk about the, um, the fact that they're in the single market and therefore there are no barriers to trade, that obviously promotes trade as well. So uh, you could talk about uh, Angela Merkel's, what she did in the sort of the early noughties, the early 2000s to make the German economy uh, such a lean mean fighting machine nowadays. So what happened was wages were stamped on and clamped on and pushed down. And that is, that's a very painful process and it was in the early 2000s, but now the German economy, they're really benefiting from that because costs are low, they're efficient, prices are relative, depends what you're buying, but prices are competitive, let's say. And so again, that helps you to sell lots of exports. Okay, and then lastly, ladies and gents, we come to the, the, the biggie. Evaluate the extent to which a current account deficit is undesirable. So before we get to this, I just want to show you, um, this is in my slide presentation, and uh, if, if you want a copy of this, just email me, uh, hello at geconomics.co.uk, as many of you have been. Um, sorry if it's taken me a bit of time to get back to it, but I, I do do my best to, to get, get back to everybody. Um, this is, a, this is a, a picture of the flows with regard to the UK's current account deficit. So that you can find this on, um, e I think this is taken from the Economics Help website actually. And it's split into slightly different categories in terms of names anyway, than you'll see in your textbook. So you'll be familiar with trading goods, trading services, investment income, current transfers. This one, slightly different, we've got net trade here, Sid Arth, well done on this one. So that's your imports and exports of goods and services. Then you've got your primary income, 
So that is income coming into the UK, uh, a, a net figure as it were, so it's the incomes in minus the outflows going out. And then the secondary income, that is simply uh, what we would refer to in the old money, in the old terms, as current transfers. But, you know, the interesting thing here is, of course, and I think we wouldn't want to get into too much detail here, but the interesting thing about this is the, the green line here shows you the value of the overall current account. And this data is going back to, sorry, I think it's 2002 to 2016. Now, <coughs> The most obvious and striking thing here is, look at the trend here, the trend is that the, uh, the current account balance is moving further and further into deficit, almost down to about 7% of GDP, percentage of GDP. Now, it's normally considered to be okay and sustainable if your current account is within 3% of GDP. But now we're getting 6, 7, you know, touching on 8%. GDP, that really is starting to get rather large. And it's only really a country like our own in the United Kingdom or the US or somewhere like that that could sustain something like this. So let's just talk about why uh, the UK might be able to sustain something like this, going back to the question. So we want to talk about the fact here, is this desirable or is this undesirable? Well. I think the first thing to say about this is, when we're looking here along the line with regard to the current account, down to sort of 7%, the thing about this is that for a country like our own, this is a real sign of a growing economy. And when your economy is growing, what do you do? You suck in imports. So you're sucking in lots of imports. Now that is not necessarily a bad thing if your economy is growing. Actually, it's a sign of strength and an indicator of strength that your economy is actually growing and you're bringing all of these imports in. So that's the first thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing to have this. It's a sign of strength when you're sucking in lots of imports. So that's one, that's one reason why it's not considered necessarily to be undesirable. Now you can see here that the UK, it's had a current account deficit for years, decades actually. Well. Why can we do that? We can do that because we are one of the wealthiest nations in the world and if there's a differential between the money coming in from exports and the money going out on imports, we can afford, or sorry, not we can afford, but we are able to borrow the necessary funds to bridge that gap. Now that is not true of all economies. So small developing nations, for example, they would not be as credit worthy as the UK and consequently would not be able to fill that void between the money's in and the money's out. But if you are, then that is not necessarily a cause for concern. It also depends, ladies and gentlemen, why you're importing a lot. So, students in my class keep talking about the fact that the UK is an island nation, not rich in raw materials, so we have to import a lot of raw materials. So I, I guess you could say that. And the, the reverse could be said of China, which is very rich in natural resource and therefore doesn't have to do so. So that's fair comment. Um, but you could also talk about the types of goods that you're bringing in. So if, for example, you're bringing in capital goods, lots of machinery, like a developing nation would be doing this. Well, in the future, what will those capital goods be used for? They'll be, made, they'll be used to make consumer goods which can hopefully be sold on in the future. And so as a consequence of that, in the short term, having a current account deficit, be it two, three, four, five, six, seven percent, might not be a bad thing because you're able, to, uh, you're able to plug that gap in the future, in the future economic cycle, as it were. So that's not necessarily a bad thing either. Now, Let's flip that on its head then and let's, let's think about reasons why it might not be so desirable. Obviously, number one, it's a sign of international uncompetitiveness. Maybe it's a sign that your exports, nobody wants them, so you need, you, know, you need to look at home and you need to think, well, why are nobody buying? Why are no countries buying our exports? So it's internationally uncompetitive. Big worry, that one. Could be a sign of inflation in your economy, maybe 
or an overvalued exchange rate. And so whilst um, you know, your import costs are cheap, your exports are very expensive, so that's not so clever either. Um, and so what have we talked about there? Uh, you also, borrowing. If you need to borrow to fill that void, you've got to pay interest on that. So that's costly. And obviously, the weaker your economy, the more likely it is that your interest costs will be very significant. So again, that's not so good either. So there's a few reasons on the plus and minus, ladies and gentlemen. And now I just want to talk briefly about uh, the way in which you could close off a question like this. So I've been talking to my group, and this is the way the A-level mark schemes are going. And I think this is a great way to finish a, a finishing paragraph here. So the way you want to start this and construct this is, you want to start with the word whether, then you want to use the stem of the question, and then you want to say depends upon. So I've written an example here for you. Whether a current account deficit can be considered, so this bit in red is the stem of the question, undesirable depends upon. And then I've written a few things there which I will let you pause the video and read yourselves. But I think that's a great structure there to evaluate a question like this. And it's certainly the way I'm going to ask my students to tackle any evaluation questions in the final exam. So I think I'm going to close it there, ladies and gentlemen. Just one final thing. I've got this exemplar script from a student of mine previously. This is 2015, uh, paper three. And there are some good questions, one, two, and three, which all touch upon calculating current account balances and all that type of thing. I think it'd be really in your interest to have a look at that just by way of practice. And if you want a copy of this, then get in touch, hello at geconomics.co.uk um, or message me on Twitter or via my website, whatever it might be, YouTube, whatever, and I'll do my best to get back to you. So, excuse me, I hope that's been of use, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.